Hi, welcome to The Great Big Movie Show. I'm your host, Eric. Tonight we're going to be talking about It Happened One Night, Frank Capra directed 1934, starring Clark Gable and <laughs> Cla Claudette Colbert. It's a romantic comedy, uh, the, first, uh, the first screwball comedy, arguably, about an heiress who tries to run away uh, to marry the man that she wants to marry, meets a newspaper man on the way, and falls in love with him instead. I'm joined to talk about the movie tonight by the Bobsy twins here, <laughs> Sue and Fran. <laughs> the Bobsy Thank twins. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. How are you ladies doing tonight? We're very good. Very I can tell. You see, very good. <laughs> very good. I can tell it's going to be a very spirited discussion this evening. Yes, it is. We'll try. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what did you guys think of the movie? It was fun. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It was uh, fun. I didn't know what to expect. I, I kind of had the feeling I might have been bored because I had never sat through a silent movie before, and I didn't know what to expect. And I just thought it was going to be real corny and, and stuff. And it was kind of corny, but when you watch it and you really get into the, the storyline, which is mm -hmm. a pretty simple storyline, but mm -hmm. I really got into the characters and their expressions, mm -hmm. especially. Um, what would you Claudette, think? Claudette, she does a good job just being the ditzy lady in the movie. Mm -hmm. and. She comes off as being the ditzy lady. I wondered why you picked us for, for this. I wonder why. <laughs> More on the nose than I had thought of. Yeah. Uh -oh. No, uh, I, well, I picked you guys because, uh, because we, we have a class every month where we watch a movie and talk about it. And, uh, and you guys had had some very good things to say about the movie. So I wanted you to come here and share those things okay. with the world. Okay, yeah. and you remembered all those things. I made notes. About. Okay, that's you good. know he cheated. He made notes, and we're sitting here with no notes. <laughs> so I don't think this is fair. Well, that's fair. Uh, but I, I have this. I have this. I do need to correct you, Sue, very briefly. You did say it was a silent movie. It is. It is a sound picture. So I just don't want to see. There the goes my memory. <laughs> Number one. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. So. Uh, so we talked about it being it being zany and and uh, about Cla uh, Claudette Colbert being a little bit ditzy. What do you think? This was Clark Gable's first comedy film. What do you guys think about him? He seriously took comedy into um, his inner self. He mm -hmm. tried hard to be comical. Mm -hmm. um, do you think it worked? It worked mm -hmm. slowly. It worked. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't. You weren't quite. He grabbed built it at up. First. He built up to it. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree. Okay. Yeah. It's starting to come back to me now. <laughs> and and I do remember he was very handsome, so that didn't mm -hmm. uh, hurt the situation of mm -hmm. trying to get involved in it. Yeah. You know, from a woman's standpoint, right, of sure. course. Right. Yeah. Uh, you're kind of drawn to the good-looking man, <laughs> and it's all in the eyes mm -hmm. and his expressions that he used. And yeah and just his expressiveness, I think that kind of grabbed me. I, I thought, wow, they really knew how to do a good job back then. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, they did. <laughs> well, I mean, they really knew how to use their faces to act and yeah. their expressions to really pull you into the movie and stuff. Yeah. And especially in talking, as, as we've been talking about the movie so far, I think it's easy, you know, from the way we've been talking about just the general description of the movie, to get this sense of it where it's very much, well, she's, she's this ditzy heiress, and he's this big, strong he-man type that takes care of her and all that kind of thing. But something that we had talked about a lot after watching the movie was how they kind of turn that on its head sometimes, how it's not always the traditional gender roles and that she gets the better of him on a couple of occasions. Like in the hitchhiking scene, yeah. where she, he's out there, oh, I'm the great hitchhiker and I can get a car right away. Mm -hmm. And she goes out there and just lifts her skirt up and says, I got a car right now. <laughs> Make, and makes him look a little foolish. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And that's a great scene. That is one of the favorite scenes. Yeah, and one that certainly is, I would say probably the most memorable scene of the whole movie, like one that people still talk about mm -hmm. and reference today. Um, but we had also talked about that, so there's that shot of her showing off her ankle, and um, and I think that's you know used by a lot of people to talk about how well this is, you know, that's how they were sexy then, and this is how you know in the movies this was how they would push the envelope. But we also talked about that this movie was a lot more conservative than movies that had just come out a few years before because of the implementation of the Hayes Code, the censorship board mm -hmm. that Hollywood. 
Um, so what, what, how did you guys feel about it? Did you feel like it was pulling its punches a little bit or trying to be something a little bit different in that way? I'm thinking back mm -hmm. to when they were in the hotel room mm -hmm. and they showed her taking her clothes off behind mm -hmm. a screen. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, it's giving you that indication that she's doing these things and that mm -hmm. he's watching, but it doesn't show anything. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you get the sense of what's going on, but you don't have to see it. Right. Like in today's movies, you're seeing everything. Mm -hmm. They're leaving a lot more up to the imagination. And just yeah. kind of, and in what you can read into Gable's expression, like you know, going back to what you were saying a minute ago, as he's watching it. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. right. And I know that just for contrast, um, that in, in the class, Fran, you and I had talked a little bit about that there was, uh, there was a movie a few years before this called The Cheat. Yeah, that was a uh, yeah. It was more risque than this mm -hmm. show, and I think that's where the censoring came into play because mm -hmm. of the risqueness of that show. Right, and this is, and I mean, here we have a movie with it happened one night that's very that's very conservative in its in its morals, and in you know, oh well, he's not you know he's supposed to be looking away when she's undressing, and they can't you know they have to hang a big curtain in between their two beds when they share a hotel room. Up and you know until they get married. Only when they're actually married can the curtain come down. When in movies like The Cheat are, you know, when what people wouldn't expect from a movie from the 1920s is all about adultery and infidelity and very explicitly so. You know, to the point where it's about a man, a woman has an affair with this rich man who actually brands her with a branding iron at one point in the movie to to make his point. I guess I don't. It's been a while. To claim her. To claim her. <laughs> to claim I didn't want to be the one to say it. <laughs> <laughs> but fair enough. Uh, this movie was also the first movie to win Oscars Grand Slam, so best director, best actor, actress, film, and screenplay. Uh, did, did it deserve it? I don't know if it did or not. I really, okay. you know, the movies of the time, mm -hmm. You'd have to line up all the movies of that year and right. say, maybe it did. <laughs> I'm thinking back. I'm thinking back to that time. Yes, before <laughs> I was born. <laughs> I don't remember back that far. Yeah, we remember um, back. Then. <laughs> I think maybe it won just because it appealed to more of a mass audience. Mm -hmm. Like it's a movie that kids could watch. It's mm -hmm. a movie families could go to and watch, even though. Maybe some of the themes were a little more risque. Mm -hmm. It wasn't explicit. It wasn't something mm -hmm. that you had to cover your eyes. Um, and I think it appealed to women, mm -hmm. especially, because it did show that role mm -hmm. reversal in some mm -hmm. of the, you know, some of the scenes. And you got kind of a sense that he was trying to dominate her. Like he he spanked her. You know, he threw her mm -hmm. over his shoulder and he spanked her. And mm -hmm. you know, it's like she kind of got the better of him. Mm -hmm. You know, type of thing. And, and even even though he did that, he's, she still got him back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, absolutely, and I think that you're, that you're right on in, just in talking about its appeal to, to the masses because that's, that's another thing that we had talked about was that, so this is a movie that came out at kind of the height of the Great Depression and in economic times yeah. that, you know, God help us, aren't quite so different from where we're at now. And how, yeah. does, how does the movie approach that stuff? How does it approach kind of economics and, you know, with the and the class system? Class is a very big thing. I think it, it gave people an escape mm -hmm. for the time. I mean, they really did. They could relate to either character mm -hmm. and wish they could be doing this, mm -hmm. you know, and um, kind of a release for the de depressed time of the era. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It kind of portrayed um, people with wealth as being the stupid ones. Yeah. I, th I thought. Mm -hmm. You know, they were the ones that were running in circles and and taking advantage of people and being cruel and mean. And it showed him, was, wasn't was there a kid that came up and uh, he gave every last cent that he had in his pocket to this kid because mm -hmm. he said something about his mother? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you remember that yes. scene? What was that? He, the he, kid was crying the because... The kid was crying because he didn't have... The kid, the kid and his mom are on, the, are on the bus. There's a long part of the movie where they're on a, a bus trip across the country, mm -hmm. Claude Gable and Claudette Colbert. And uh, this woman passes out on the bus because he and her, she and her son had because eaten he had eat days he had because they spent all their money buying the bus tickets and so yeah. yeah. And so he, you know, had compassion on her and gave mm -hmm. her 
Well, and they both did. I mean, I think that's a big that's a big moment for her character too, because she, you know, like she's you know complicit in it and giving all the money that they have to the kid. Yes, and then they didn't have any. Right, and <laughs> yeah. so now you know she, who's a, you know this wealthy heiress, is now you know at the you know at the yeah. bottom of the ladder. Mm -hmm. so and she had to learn that even you make that choice to do that, okay, now you have nothing. And mm -hmm. that was something new to her. Mm -hmm. Like before in her former life, she could have easily have given money to somebody in need mm -hmm. and she would still have plenty, right, no right. worries. But mm -hmm. now she was in the situation of, okay, she gave everything she had, now what's she gonna do? Right. She's gonna have to do what everybody else was mm -hmm. doing. They were trying to survive. Yeah, and I, would, I wanna keep, keep that in mind, what we just talked about, and also you know, kind of tie it to the last couple of things we talked about in you know, its appeal to the masses, now, so what Fran was saying about comparing it to other movies that were out at the same time, I mean, this is a movie that came out the same year as The Thin Man, another famous comedy movie. Did you see that? Long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago. Okay, I never saw it. So. But well, but well, then I'll talk to Fran for a second. How how does this movie? How is the, are the two movies different, especially in how they portray the rich? Well, I don't remember. <laughs> give, me the, give me the right. Well, in the Thin Man, in the Thin Man, they're wealthy, right? Nick and Nora they're, yes have yes. a crazy amount of money. Okay. And you know, and so it's a society movie, and whereas I'm a society okay, detective. Okay. And in, in, in um, yes, it happened one night. They had money and they were wealthy, mm. but they weren't like the newspaper man wasn't like at the top of the caste system. Right. He was. Just okay, mm -hmm. hoping to make his bundle by interviewing this lady or getting a story on her. Right, right, right. Clark Gable. And um, so they were they were kind of like fighting to go to that position. Where in the Thin Man, they were already they were happy and rich and right. In, in that, they're the hero. The rich are the heroes in that yes, movie, and in and this the movie, are the, the blue collar are, yeah. the, are the heroes. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, and I mean, I do want to go back to what you just said about. And I, I, I don't think that, so like Clark Gable isn't, he doesn't care to be rich though, does he? I mean, he's comfortable being the blue collar guy he's Yes, being. he is. He yeah. wants to be that right. person. So I mean, you have that too, this affirmation of not just we're the heroes, but we're, we're the best as is, mm -hmm. you know, and we're something to be proud of, which I think is, you know, a great message both for then and for now, really, with where things are today. And then she had to make that choice. Was she mm -hmm. going to go for the guy with the money mm -hmm. and be uh, situated for the rest of her life? Mm -hmm. Or was she going to go for the guy that made her happy, you know, and mm -hmm. do the best with that? And, right. and what choice was she going to make? And I think that appeals to a lot of people because we all want happiness. Mm -hmm. And I think when people really think about it, if they allowed themselves to think about it, they would rather choose happiness and joy over being rich. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, Sue, favorite part of the movie? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> favorite part of the movie? The end? <laughs> the end? Fair enough. Fair enough, Fran? I like the part where, um, I guess they were on the bus, and this mm -hmm. one guy recognized her, mm. and he was going to scurry her off somewhere right. and the sh shapely I think is yeah it. shapely yeah and he, he <laughs> was making a proposition to the newspaper man to split the money and mm -hmm. all that and then the newspaper man just shut him down completely yeah, yeah. that was a good part that because good he part. was noble yeah. the newspaper man was very noble <laughs> <laughs> well I think it's a terrific movie you guys recommend it oh yes definitely yeah. all right yep. excellent well thank you ladies for joining me tonight You're this welcome. was a lot of You're fun very welcome well, thank this you. was fun good so It Happened One Night was our movie for this month. We'll be back next month talking about something brand new. In the meantime, I want to thank our crew for helping us out tonight. Our crew, as always, was made up of students taking our free monthly How to Make a TV Show class. So I want to thank Kelly and Lee and Ross and David for being our crew tonight. Uh, if you would like to sign up for that or any of our other free TV production classes, you can contact me at 763-231-2803 or eric at northmetrotv.com, or just go to northmetrotv.com. We'll be back next month with a new episode. We'll see you then.